Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. We'll start in one minute. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Welcome to the informational session for the Catalytic Climate Finance Facility round of applications. Before we dive in, here are a few key points to keep in mind. This webinar is being recorded for later viewing and we'll share the video link and the slides with you afterwards. During the session, we'll guide you through the application process, which remains open until October 24th. You get insights into the C facility selection criteria and receive tips on applying for funding and acceleration support. If you have any questions, please utilize the Q&A tool on Zoom instead of the chat. You'll find the icon located on the toolbar at the bottom or up in your screen. And now I'd like to turn it over to Joe Livonworth macaulay CC Facility Lead at Climate Policy Initiative. Over to you, Joe. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session and thank you for joining. We look forward to helping you improve and target your submissions, helping ensure this application round is as impactful as possible. The CC facility is a partnership between Cl Climate Policy Initiative, or CPI, and Convergence, who are combining their expertise to turn innovative financial vehicles into scalable solutions and grow the blended climate finance market. CPI's mission is to help governments, businesses, and financial institutions drive growth while addressing climate change. We're a global institution with offices in Brazil, India, Cape Town, the UK, and the US. Convergence Blended Finance is the global network for blended finance with a membership of over 160 public, private, and philanthropic investors, as well as sponsors of transactions and funds. Convergence increases private investment in emerging markets and developing economies to advance the UN SDGs and Paris Agreement. Thank you once again for being here and for your interest in the CC facility. And let's get started with today's agenda. Firstly, we'll dive into an explanation of how the CC facility operates and its role in accelerating the implementation of climate finance structures. Following that, my colleague Shrizu Dakal will lead you through the application process, providing insights into the key characteristics we are seeking in submitted proposals. And lastly, we'll leave time to address any questions you may have. Please don't hesitate to type your questions into the Q&A tool on Zoom, and we'll do our best to provide answers. Uh, so let's ensure this session is as interactive as possible. With that, let me start by providing some context on the CC facility and the key market barriers we are seeking to address through this program. First, some context on why we launched this program. Limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius requires massive global investments particularly from the private sector. One of the things CPI is most known for is our analysis of global climate finance flows. We've been tracking these flows, uh, both in public and private investments in climate action for over a decade. Our most recent report found that annual tracked climate finance surpassed 1 trillion USD for the first time in 2021, six years after the Paris Agreement was adopted. The green area on the graphic shows the average annual climate finance flows in 2021 to 22, which reach almost 1.3 trillion, which was double the amount of climate finance invested in 2019-20. However, the yellow area on the graph shows the amount of climate finance that is needed annually by 2030 to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. This amount is at least five times higher than the current level of climate finance flows. Despite the seemingly dramatic scale of this funding gap, it represents less than 5% of global GDP. Moreover, this increase would not be based solely on new additional sources of finance. Aligning finance with a 1.5C path would demand cutting the financing of high emissions activities and some resources be reallocated to climate finance. 
Despite this significant climate finance gap, key market challenges hinder the launch and scale up of new high impact investment solutions. There is a massive and unmet potential for climate investment, mainly generated by the lack of scale of existing solutions and the nascent and fragmented ecosystem currently available to support them. Relatedly, a key barrier limiting investments into high impact climate finance solutions is a lack of a strong investable pipeline. There are numerous climate investment ideas in the world, but we found that often even high quality concepts like access to the necessary startup capital and technical support to overcome many of the common barriers in this space, especially for local initiatives in the global south. Furthermore, capital, especially at the early stages, is often easier to secure when financial vehicles and fund managers have a track record and the perceived risk for investors is lower. These factors combined with risk return misalignment and other market challenges have limited the potential to scale up these solutions. Through existing programs, uh, CPI and Convergence are addressing some of these challenges for vehicles at the feasibility and design and piloting stage. These are the Global Innovation Lab for Climate Finance run by CPI and Design Funding Windows run by Convergence. Let's talk a little bit about CPI's lab. The lab supports climate finance vehicles at the design, feasibility, and piloting stage to test and refine their idea, structure, and implementation strategy. The lab's theory of change revolves around collaboration between public and private sectors, openly sourcing concepts from finance innovators and a powerful network to move ideas into action. To date, the lab has supported 78 instruments uh, spanning funds, facilities, guarantees, bonds, insurance, credit products, and more. Each of these instruments shares a common goal, harnessing limited public or concessional capital to unlock large-scale private investment. Since its inception a decade ago, Lab Ideas have mobilized over 4.1 billion US dollars, illustrating the significant impact of the program in driving forward climate finance. For the purposes of today's webinar, the key differentiator between the lab and the CC facility are their unique program offerings. The lab helps turn early stage ideas into actions, developing concrete mechanisms that are ready for the market, while the CC facility supports the market rollout of these solutions towards scalability. In other words, the lab is well suited for ideas in initial development, proof of concept, feasibility, or at the pilot stage, while the CC facility supports existing vehicles that have undergone robust market testing and are looking to scale. We'll dive further into the eligibility criteria for the CC facility later in this presentation. But for those of you who have an earlier stage idea, we did want to note that the lab currently has an open call for applications and you can find more detail on the lab and CPI websites. Now let's delve into Convergence's design funding program for a moment. Through thematic funding windows, Convergence provides milestone-based grants to innovative blended finance structures. Grants are designed to support vehicles at the feasibility, proof of concept, and expansion stage. On a spectrum from earlier to later stage, the design funding windows sit between the lab and the CC facility. Currently, Convergence has two design funding windows open that will provide early stage funding to climate-focused solutions in Asia and to gender-responsive vehicles globally. More information on these windows can be found on the Convergence website. Since inception, Convergence's design funding program has supported over 60 blended finance structures with 16 million US dollars in grants and counting. Uh, these solutions have collectively mobilized 1.9 billion US dollars to date. Having provided some context on key market barriers and the current early stage ecosystem for supporting climate finance solutions, I'll now turn to the CC facility, which is which is designed to address critical acceleration gaps at the adoption and scaling stages. Through strategic and bundled deployment of grant funding and customized acceleration support, the program focuses on proactively addressing key barriers to raising private capital by building the capabilities of grantees to generate business traction, secure funding, and accelerate market rollout. At its core, the CC facilities value proposition centers around three key offerings. One, it provides up to 70 days of customized in-kind technical support over 12 to 18 months from a dedicated team, as well as field experts, senior management, investor relations, communications, and operations teams. Two, it provides up to 500,000 US dollars in working capital 
to help vehicles overcome a critical market need for startup and scale up grant funding. And three, it provides access to climate finance knowledge and best practices through a dedicated learning hub. We'll delve further into the specific program offering shortly, but it's worth re-emphasizing here that the CC facility is intended to be a later stage complement to the lab and design funding programs. And as such, we're looking for applicants that have already executed proof of concept transactions or pilots and or can demonstrate that they have proven their investment model. The CC facility launched last year and has supported six innovative vehicles to date, with a further five soon to be announced. We run biannual open calls for applications and have so far received more than 500 applications across two cycles, attesting to the significant demand for this type of program offering. I will now turn it over to my colleague Shrizu Dakal, Associate on the Design, Funding and Market Acceleration Team at Convergence, to give you a summary of the CC facility's specific value offerings and what we are looking for from applicants. Over to you, Shrizu. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, so now let's take a closer look at the CC facility. So to recap a bit, the CC facility aims to accelerate market-ready climate solutions by providing financial and acceleration support. So our approach involves a very rigorous selection process to ensure that the most promising and impactful financing solutions are chosen. So successful applicants can receive up to USD 500,000 in grant funding, which is dispersed in tranches based on the achievement of key milestones. And beyond the financial support, we also provide comprehensive acceleration support, which includes technical expertise from our team in areas such as strategy, fundraising, and operations. And um, additionally, we also leverage conversions and CPI's extensive networks to connect our grantees with investors and stakeholders within the ecosystem. Um, a key pillar of the CC facility is also the learning hub. So this platform aims to strengthen the field and reduce the fragmentation in the ecosystem by publishing evidence-based insights and best practices from the climate blended finance space. So these resources are designed not just for our grantees, but also to benefit the broader market. Um, the CC facility provides a very tailored support to grantees for a period of 12 to 18 months, which is based on their specific needs. So our focus is on helping them overcome key barriers to raising private capital by strengthening their ability to gain business traction, secure funding, and speed up their market launch. So the grantees from the facility will benefit from, like I earlier said, USD 500,000 in working capital, which can be used for key startup and scale-up costs, um, such as finalizing the legal structure, refining the capital and financial models, and supporting fundraising efforts. A key point to note here is that funding from the CC facility cannot be used to capitalize the investment vehicle. The funding is for managing the working capital cost, which is associated with launching and scaling. Um, and in addition to the financial support, the grantees will also be receiving 12 months of customized technical assistance. This includes help with structuring and financial modeling and refining the gender and impact frameworks, to name a few, from a dedicated team, field experts, and senior management. So in this slide, we'll dive into the different programs being offered by Conversions and CPI and how they are different. So these programs provide a very complementary but distinct solutions for innovative climate finance vehicles. But the key differentiators between them are their unique program offerings. The lab helps turn ideas into action, developing concrete mechanisms that are ready for the market. The funding programs at Conversions provide design stage grants, such as feasibility and proof of concept grants to early stage blended finance structures, whereas the CC facility supports the market rollout of these solutions towards scalability. Um, given the differing eligibility criteria, which is associated with the lab design funding and the CC facility, we strongly recommend that you do not apply to two programs simultaneously, but instead Prioritize, prioritize the program that is best suited to your vehicle's needs and stage of development. And this is recommended for the following reasons. So applying to the program for which you are best suited will ultimately maximize your chances of being selected and benefiting from the dedicated support. And as these programs 
offer very distinct value offerings, which are tailored to the specific needs and priorities of instruments at either the incubation or acceleration stage, we really encourage you to look back at your vehicle and the stage you are in to apply to a specific um, funding program. Um, it's also important to note here that several former lab and design funding grantees have gone on to be selected for the CC facility support. While there is no guaranteed pathway from the lab or design funding program to the CC facility, vehicles that have participated in the lab have undergone rigorous uh, viability testing and strategy refinement, and therefore they tend to be competitive applicants for the CC facility. So um, let's talk now about the key characteristics that we are looking for. First, the blended finance structure must be focused on tackling climate change. Um, the geographies of these structures must be targeting developing countries. This means while the applicant organizations themselves don't necessarily need to be based in a developing country, the project's beneficiaries and the activities must be. And the stage of maturity uh, is also very important. Structures must be market ready, meaning that they should have already completed some initial phases like feasibility study or a proof of concept or executed a pilot transaction. Um, I will provide more detail on this in the subsequent slides as well. Um, the team behind these structures need to demonstrate a proven track record and experience in the targeted sector and geography. They should also be willing to commit to the CC facilities 12 to 18 month program. Um, finally, applications must come from organizations and not individuals. For example, this can include advisory firms, foundations, nonprofit, uh, fund managers, and even private enterprises. Also, the lead organization cannot be a public institution, such as a government or a UN agency, um, DFIs, MDBs, etc. Uh, now let's go through the CC facilities five evaluation criteria one by one. So the first criteria is additionality. Um, we're assessing to what degree does the vehicle you're proposing um, address the climate finance barriers or market failures in a new or more efficient way than existing structures. Um, in simple terms, is the structure offering a new financing solution or is it just doing what already exists? Um, next is the catalytic potential. Here we're basically looking at two things. First, can this structure be scaled and replicated in other places? Um, second, does the structure contribute to climate mitigation or adaptation in developing economies? Uh, next is gender equality. So this criteria looks at whether the structure considers gender, gender equality. Does the structure factor in relevant risks and opportunities? Is there a gender lens integrated into the structure's design and operations? Or is there an intentionality to integrate gender considerations into the vehicle? On financial sustainability front, we look at two elements. First, is the structure likely to secure the funding that it needs to launch and operate? How much runway does the vehicle have? Um, second, what's the path to becoming financially self-sufficient over the long term and phasing out concessional financing? Um, lastly, mobilization. Uh, this criteria looks at the structure's ability to attract new investment, uh, especially from private investors. We look at whether there is any interest, example, soft commitments from potential investors and its overall bankability. Um, Julio, can we have the slide up again? Or is it, can everyone see the slides? I think Julio is having uh, a technical issue. So we'll try to get the slides. Uh back up shortly. Apologies, everyone, for the tech issue. We'll have the slides up and running very shortly. Yeah, there we go. Um, Julie, we can go back to the next slide. OK, so 
here, um, yeah, again, going back to assessing whether your vehicle is at the right stage for the CC facility program is to see whether you meet at least two and preferably all of the following criteria that I'm going to discuss now. So you or one of your consortium partners uh, should have already obtained the relevant investment license or registration necessary to deploy capital in your vehicle's target market. Now, this does not necessarily mean that your vehicle needs to already be established as an independent legal entity, but it does mean that you or one of your core partners should be legally able as an organization to deploy investment capital in the target markets. Uh, the second criterion is having a financial model already developed for your vehicle. Programs with an earlier stage focus, like the lab, provide support to help the proponents build out and stress test their financial models. But at the CC facility, we are looking for vehicles which have already gone through this initial modeling and stress testing process, but that may require some further support to refine the assumptions as they seek to scale and raise additional capital. Um, the third criterion is that you should have implemented at least one proof of concept transaction or pilot project for your vehicle. And this is really critical in enabling you to validate and provide evidence of the feasibility and potential impact of your approach and is one of the key aspects that our team looks for when assessing the overall fit with the program. Um, the final criteria to keep in mind is whether you have engaged with prospective investors to validate the proposed vehicle structure and financing approach. Again, this is a very critical step to ensure that your vehicle is market ready and to mitigate any uh, fundamental concerns that investors may have around the proposed investment structure and approach. Um, finally, um, Let's take a closer look at the selection process and the timelines associated with it. So the CC facility follows a phased selection process. It starts with a call for applications, and we are currently in this phase. Uh, the deadline for submitting your concept note is on October 24th. And following the deadline, the team will carefully review all the concept notes. We assess if they meet the eligibility requirements, as well as also assess uh, them against the uh, evaluation criteria I discussed previously. Uh, promising concept notes will then be invited to submit a full application, which will be by November 26. Then we will move on to the evaluation phase. So the shortlisted applicants will be invited to a closed door virtual pitch day to present their concept to a panel of judges. Um, afterwards, we carry out in-depth due diligence on the proposals and on the teams. And finally, the later stage includes the CC facility team seeking investment committee approvals and final board approvals in May. We expect to contract with a new cohort in May. So um, that's it from us in terms of content. Uh, now I will pass on to my colleague, Joe, to kick off the Q&A session. Thank you, Shrizu. Before we move into the Q&A, we just wanted to flag that we will be hosting two office hour sessions this Friday, October 11th, one at 10 a.m. UK time and one at 9 a.m. Pacific time. These sessions are designed to address any specific or detailed questions that we don't have time to get to today. So it will be an open Q&A format. Um, and links to register for these sessions will be shared in the Zoom chat. Please feel free to sign up if you are interested. With that, we will move into the Q&A section. Um, and we'll begin, uh, we, we've been answering some questions in the chat, but we also received some questions in advance. Um, so I'm just going to quickly run through a couple of those and provide some responses, and then we'll begin um, opening up to questions that we're getting in the live chat. Um, so one of the questions that we received is, can the CC facility funding be used for research purposes or to support civil society or NGO initiatives? The answer is no, the CC facility does not provide research grants. Our funding is intended to support climate finance vehicles to scale, mobilize capital, achieve commercial viability, and ultimately generate significant climate and socioeconomic impacts. Um, as my colleague mentioned, uh, Shrizu mentioned, grant funding can be used as working capital to cover key startup and scale up costs, um, but is not intended to be used for research projects. Another question that we received is, can NGOs apply? The answer is yes, uh, NGOs are welcome to apply as long as the proposed solution for which they are seeking support is a financial vehicle. 
And then uh, finally, uh, we got a question around whether organizations can apply as a consortium. Uh, and again, the answer is yes. We welcome applications from consortia as long as the lead applicant is not a public development bank or government agency. Um, with that, we'll open it up to some questions we've received so far. Um, and we got a great question from Rocio Milagros Rena in the in the Q and A. Um, she said, "I have a question about technical assistance. How do you choose slash determine this assistance? You open a call for technical assistance, or do you have already have a team of experts inside the CC facility? If you open a call, where is it possible to find or apply to this?" So, Shrizu, maybe I'll turn that question over to you um, to to respond. Sure. So the technical assistance is a part of the package, like I earlier said, of the CC facility. So we provide grant funding as well as technical assistance. And the support that we provide is actually tailored to each applicant. So in your application, we have specific questions where we ask you what kind of support you would want from the CC facility. And we have a look at that. And then I could provide you examples of the typical acceleration support that we provide, which is around helping you refine your financial model, helping you refine your impact frameworks or gender frameworks. So it is along these areas of strategy operations and fundraising, but it's really it is tailored to the need of every applicant. And uh, we work together to develop a technical assistance plan through which you, we can provide you support. Great, thanks Shrizu. We have another question from Victoria Galliano, um, which I think is is important to address and a great question, which is, do you fund projects or only financing vehicles? The answer is that we fund financing vehicles. Um, so for example, if there are a set of projects um, where you're, you're seeking to move from having executed an individual project to more of a platform approach, where you're raising a vehicle to deploy capital into multiple projects or raise funding for multiple projects, then that would be eligible. But there does need to be some sort of financial solution that is at the core of what you are proposing to move forward. Um, so we don't fund individual uh, one-off projects. Hopefully that, that is helpful. Um, we have a question from Abhimanyu, uh, Sorry, the, the questions are moving up and down. Um, we have a question from Abhimanyu Singh. What is the best program for a project that is actually trying to raise funds for a prototype or MVP? Um, Trizu or, or someone else from the Convergence team, welcome to, to step in and answer that one. Sure, I can provide some context. So um, Abhimanyu, your question seems to be, what is the best program for a project that is actually trying to raise funds for a prototype or MVP? Uh, like my colleague Joe said, we do not provide funding for projects. It needs to be a financial vehicle or a financial structure. Um, for if uh, you are raising funds for a prototype or an MVP, it could be earlier stage, so it might not be a better fit for the CC facility. With CC facility, we're looking at financial vehicles or structures that are um, already launched or are very close to being launched. So we're looking at slightly later stage solutions. So if you are uh, thinking about how a prototype should be or trying to assess the feasibility around it. The design funding program could be a better fit, but again, through all of these programs, we are trying to support financial vehicles and not projects. Great. We we have a question from um, an anonymous attendee, but I think it's an important one to address, which is kindly elaborate what is meant by financial vehicle. Great question. Um, a financial vehicle can mean a variety of different things. It could be a traditional closed-end fund. Uh, it could be an open-ended fund. It could be a guarantee facility. Uh, it could be a, a, a special purpose vehicle. Um, uh, it, you know, it could be an insurance-related vehicle. Uh, so it really, we are fairly flexible in terms of our mandate. Um, and as mentioned, it could cover a variety of different kind of financing types and asset classes. We also, when you go to actually submit your concept note, um, we provide this context as well on what we consider to be a financial vehicle as part of the application, uh, just to help guide you through that process and understand uh, whether you're eligible. Great, 
just scanning through some questions here. Um, we have a great question from Gazil Jabbar. Can you give an example of a proof of concept? Trizu, do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, so with proof of concept, it's uh, really what the name means, right? So you are trying to prove out a concept and you are slightly advanced than the feasibility stage where you're trying to uh, ideate an idea or you're trying to refine that. So at the proof of concept stage as well, we typically uh, refer to solutions which have uh, at least an initial financial model or a game plan or at least have some level of investor engagement and then you're trying to prove out the concept and kind of validate it in the market so that's what we mean by proof of concept yeah so for example if you're looking to raise um as, as an example an agriculture fund that's investing in smallholder uh, farmer related businesses um if you what we mean by proof of concept is you will have at least validated that the investment strategy that you're looking to deploy can actually work and that you have a pipeline of businesses. Ideally, you would have made an investment as part of maybe a pilot project um, or as part of some initial funding that you've raised to show that um, you know you sort of have the capabilities experience and also that the the structure you're putting forward is actually one that can be practically deployed in in the market. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, so we have a, a really good question from Soon Jong. Um, what does it mean to say engage with prospective investors to validate the proposed vehicle structure? Um, I think we've left this a little bit flexible um, because we recognize that engagement with investors can take different forms. But I'll give a few concrete examples um, to help clarify this. So. The, the reason that we have this criterion is because we want to ensure that particularly for um, structures that are highly innovative in the sense that they are, um, you know, developing a new type of financial instrument or applying um, kind of an existing methodology, but in a new market, we want to make sure that at a baseline level that investors will see this type of structure as feasible, bankable and investable. Um, and so what that engagement could look like, it could be, if, if you're a little bit more advanced, it could be that you're in due diligence with investors, um, that they've signaled interest in uh, evaluating your fund for a potential investment, or even that you've secured some initial commitments, whether term sheets or firm commitments uh, from either public, private or philanthropic investors. Um, that being said, uh, it may be a little bit earlier stage. But being able to speak to having uh, engaged with different types of investors to sort of propose your vehicle structure to them and receiving feedback that you've then incorporated into your vehicle structure design and implementation strategy, that is really valuable um, in enabling us to assess whether you are at the right stage for benefiting from, from this program. Uh, so hopefully that is, that is helpful uh, in clarifying that point. Okay, uh, we have another question um, from uh, an, another anonymous attendee, but um, in considering your criteria, can philanthropic grants to social enterprises count as an investment? Um, Shrizu, do you want to take that one? Mm -hmm. Let me just um, have a look at the question. Yeah, so can philanthropic grants to social enterprises count as investment? Um, grants cannot count as investment, but in the vehicles that we are supporting, uh, what we mean by engagement with investors or funders is you might have engaged with commercial capital providers as well as grant funders. Some grant funders might have supported your solution. So uh, we are, we, um, we invite applications which have received grant funding and investments both, but I'm not sure if uh, that answers the questions, but yes, philanthropic grants does not really count as investment, but in the vehicles we support, we do see that some level of grant funding has been there and private investment is also there. So that is okay. And that is the core of the blended finance system as well. 
Okay, and then we have a, a really good question from Ben Matranga. Can you elaborate on the evaluation criteria? Of the five categories shown in the slide, are any weighted more heavily than others? Great question, Ben. Um, so I would say no, uh, the, the criteria are weighted equally. Um, that being said, again, we, you know, we're considering um, a really large variety of different types of, of financial vehicles. And so we sort of think through how to balance, um, you know, how to balance weighting this criteria based on context. But what we, what I will say is that um, at a minimum, uh, you know, the, your vehicle or your, your application should, should score um, sort of fairly high across all the criteria if possible. Um, I think they're all equally important um, and speak to different aspects of what we're looking to support. So again, additionality, that's really focused on sort of innovation in the sense of how you are addressing a climate finance barrier in a new or more efficient way than existing solutions. Catalytic potential really speaks to impact, um, both socioeconomic and environmental and also scalability and replicability. So can this um, solution that you're putting forward uh, be actually uh, scaled? Can it take on additional investment? And you know, what are the mechanics of how that works at scale? And can it be replicated potentially in other markets? Um, gender equality is, is another really important piece um, of what we're looking for. Um, and we're looking for responsiveness to relevant gender risks and opportunities but also incorporating gender considerations across operations um, uh, and investments and anticipating positive outcomes for gender equality. And here it can be a demonstrated to do this, even if you're not fully there yet, we can work with you to help you mainstream gender across those aspects of your operations. Again, financial sustainability really key, um, including demonstrated likelihood of achieving financial close um, and then having a street strategic plan for long-term uh, economic viability. Uh, we understand that obviously you may not be at that stage yet, but at least having a clear pathway uh, to achieving financial sustainability and transitioning away from concessional capital is, is very important. And finally, mobilization, which obviously speaks to potential to mobilize private capital and attract new segments of investors. Um, I see a question from Stephanie Obando. So she has asked, please, can you clarify about what do you mean with blended funding? And can you tell me if these funds cover 100% of the project? So this is a good question. And uh, I think you're asking about blended finance. So what we mean by blended finance is that in the vehicle that you are proposing, we would like to see the use of catalytic capital uh, to attract or mobilize private sector capital. So blended finance is essentially a structuring approach, right? So the vehicle that you are proposing needs to be utilizing both commercial and concessional capital. And the second part of your question, um, is the fund going to cover 100% of the cost? So the funding that we provide is kind of like a working capital uh, grant, right? So you can use it to uh, various aspects of the vehicle to design and scale it, but it's not going to cover 100% of the project cost associated with it. We have a clarification question um, on whether the 500K, can the 500K be used for working capital or only for launching or expanding the facility via operating costs? So I, th I think the response is, both. Um, the 500k can be used for working capital, meaning to cover expenses associated with, you know, fundraising, um, uh, you know, maybe there are travel expenses associated with that, um, expenses associated with the costs of having a team that is developing, you know, financial models or impact frameworks or um, gender action plans, conducting market studies, but also, you um, you know, it can be used to to bridge the funding gap and, and essentially cover other types of operating costs as well. And again, in our application process, um, you'll be able to look through um, basically the full suite of different types of costs that we can cover and select the ones that you think are most relevant to your vehicle. Um, so that information is there to help guide you through that process as well.
cruise it over to you maybe to to select the next question yeah uh, i see a question which is uh, not really been talked about so this is a question from victor uh, and Tilon. Uh, so the question is, do you consider regenerative agriculture financing strategy as a target related to climate resilience projects? Um, so just want to um, uh, clarify here that through the CC facility, uh, we are sector ag agnostic, meaning that we are here to support climate blended finance vehicles. So you could be targeting climate mitigation or adaptation or any sectors uh, within that, but it needs to be targeting climate action. But we do have a thematic stream uh, on regenerative agriculture focusing on sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, but uh, it's just a thematic stream and uh, it does not prevent you from applying to other sectors, but just keep in mind that the vehicle needs to be targeting climate change. We have an important question, I think, that's that's uh, relevant to address here. Um, again, from an anonymous attendee, but um, the question reads, I'm a bit confused to have already done an investment transaction and to be a registered fund management business in each market, for example, across Southeast Asia or Africa, means that the fund is mostly set up with a full team and large GP commitment and some LPs. So it feels like to have all four of your criteria as a much later stage fund or mostly set up and the 500K is just a small portion of the fund set up in a late stage. Yeah, good question. And maybe we can show slide 17 again um, since that's what this is referring to. But um, we put these criteria, these four criteria here to give some guidance on some of the key milestones that you should be seeking to achieve in order to be eligible for the program. But again, we want to emphasize that this is flexible um, and that we don't necessarily expect that you would meet all four of these um, of these sort of milestones in order to be considered for the program. Um, so maybe I'll just go through and, and break them down one by one. Obtain the relevant investment licenses or registrations necessary to deploy capital in your vehicle's target markets. Again, we're not necessarily looking for you to have a fund set up or registered. Um, this speaks a little bit more to like a proof of concept transaction. So we just want to make sure that there is there are not going to be any kind of legal or regulatory barriers that will prevent you from actually developing and implementing this solution. So if you can articulate what the pathway would be to register your fund and also speak to maybe your track record, um, whether at a prior organization or at your current organization, deploying capital or conducting similar transactions in your target markets, um, then that would help sort of us understand how you would meet that criteria and why you would be at sort of the right stage um, to, to go about deploying this capital. So it's really, we see this as more of a risk mitigation measure. Again, you do not need to have your fund management vehicle uh, sort of officially registered or legally set up. That is something that we can help um, provide funding for and actually help guide you through that process. Um, in addition, we have sort of a pro bono uh, network of, of legal support that we can help mobilize to, to guide you through that process. But really to understand, do you have a track record either at your current organization or your prior organization of deploying capital? And is there a clear pathway towards actually operationalizing the solution uh, that you put forward? Developed a financial model for your vehicle. That one is, I think, fairly straightforward. Um, so I won't spend too much time on that. Um, but it's a really important step, uh, particularly in terms of, um, you know, if you're engaging with investors, that's one of the first things they're going to be asking for and helps us understand what is the structure and how does it scale. Again, implemented at least one proof of concept transaction or pilot project for your vehicle. This does not need to be through the actual vehicle that you're looking to, to um, receive support for. So for example, you may have raised grant funding uh, to invest in a project or, or some other type of funding to invest in a single project. You now want to take that approach and scale it across multiple projects. Um, so we would count that initial project as long as the sort of mandate and criteria are aligned with what you're looking to what you're looking to implement moving forward as a proof of concept or pilot project. Um, and then uh, I've already talked a little bit about what engagement with prospective investors means. So hopefully that helps 
clarify the question a little bit. We're not looking for, you know, an existing fully staffed fund um, that is is looking to deploy capital. Um, but we are looking for committed teams that have a track record and experience in the target markets that can show that they have tested um, their investment model and that they have at least engaged with market participants to validate that actually the, this model is is attractive, it fills a market gap, um, and that should it be able to scale, that there is actually appetite among investors to fund this type of project. Um, I see a few questions which are related to the usage of the fund. And there's one specific question. Again, this is from an anonymous attendee. Um, at some point, it was mentioned that the capital cost of structuring the vehicle will not be covered. Could you please clarify this point? So what we meant is that the funding from the CC facility cannot be used as investment capital. So the funding that we provide is essentially working capital that you can use to cover, for instance, salaries or fees of consultants or legal fees and things like that. But the funds cannot be used uh, to on-lend or cannot be used as actual investment into your vehicle. Yes. So, for example, you cannot use the grant funding as first loss capital. That is not an eligible use of funding. Um, you also cannot use the, the grant funding to capitalize a technical assistance facility. The grant funding can be used to cover um, sort of uh, objectives that are related to technical assistance, such as refining your approach, um, conducting market studies, engaging with prospective pipeline. Um, but we are not, uh, because of the way that we structure the grants and they are milestone performance based, we are not um, able to sort of take that funding and apply it directly to a vehicle. Um, it really is designed as bridge funding to help you scale. Okay, just looking through some of the other questions here. Okay, great. We have a question on technical support. Um, so uh, from an anonymous attendee, the technical support team is integrated for experts that are hired temporarily, temporarily by the CC facility or that are permanent experts of the CC facility. Yeah, this is a good question. So we assign, um, as mentioned, a dedicated team to provide intensive support over an initial 12-month period and then um, ongoing kind of ad hoc support after that. Um, but the, the technical support team are really there to help provide um, uh, specific support in areas that we have uh, you know, mutually identified as, as important to the development of the vehicle and to help you ultimately achieve those performance milestones. The team is typically led by an in-house expert from uh, the CC facility. And then um, to the extent that, uh, I guess there, there are two sort of options as well. To the extent that you require specialized support, we may bring in someone from our network of experts um, to uh, assist you in developing uh, kind of a very specific work stream or, or product related to your vehicle. Or we can also provide funding. For example, if you have a consultant that you, that you already have in mind or a group that you're working with, we can provide funding to hire those consultants to, to work on a specific project. But overall, the technical support team really sits in-house um, and has expertise across a variety of the sectors and asset classes uh, that we support through the program. Um, I see a good question here from Gustavo Santivanej. So he's asking about additionality. So the question is, for the additionality criterion, uh, regional could regional additionality be considered? Uh, he, yeah, so he's saying that a business model could be additional in a region, but not necessarily in other. Will that be considered? And besides, in what aspects innovation is expected in the structure of the fund? 
so yes um like we said earlier by additionality what we what we hope to see is how you are solving a problem that others have not been able to solve or how you are solving it in a different way so it could be regional additionality it could be something in the region that somebody has not done so we would not describe additionality based on like a region but it needs to be a solution or it needs to be something that is doing it in a more efficient way than others existing in the region right so that's how we describe additionality and in terms of innovation it can be in the structure of the fund it could be in terms of the value offering that you are providing so it's not really related to one aspect but it's really in terms of how you differentiate yourself with other similar vehicles in the market We have a great question from Victoria Galliano. Do you need to have proof of received funds or grants from other grantors of catalytic funds already, or can this be the first funding stage? Um, the answer is, is no. We don't need to have proof of received funds or grants from other catalytic funders. Um, this can be the first funding stage. We're more focused on whether you meet sort of the, the other criteria around kind of stage of development. Um, so it, you know, uh, some of the some of the grantees that we've already um, accepted into the program, it it is the case that this is the first funding that they've received. Um, so and and we're looking to really be catalytic and play that role um, in taking on that risk and funding uh, really kind of innovative and scalable solutions. Um, but we do look for you know if if you haven't received additional uh, funding already. We do look for um, sort of in the application, your ability to talk through what other work you've done um, with the vehicle to, to validate your approach um, and to sort of meet the, the criteria that, um, that we covered earlier in the presentation. There's a question around eligibility of organizations. It's uh, from an anonymous attendee asking, what's the maximum funding you can provide to a DFI? So as we noted earlier in the presentation, uh, we cannot provide grant funding to public institutions such as DFIs, MDBs, or UN government, UN bodies or government agencies. So we can only provide our funding to private enterprises such as advisory firms, foundations, uh, and others, but not to public institutions. But uh, I'll add one point here is that if you're applying as part of a consortium, if you are not the lead applicant and you are just providing support to a private enterprise to apply to the facility, you would be eligible, but you cannot be the lead applicant applying to the facility. So we we have a, a good question on on funding. Um, can I use the CC facility to match other capital that needs matching capital to set up a fund? So um, this comes back to something that that we've discussed already, but just I think important to clarify. Um, so the the CC facility funding cannot be used to invest directly in a vehicle, as we mentioned. If the funding um, you know, we've seen cases where, for example, there is uh, a, another type of catalytic program that is looking for matching funding um, or is looking for some sort, some sort of uh, existing funding as, a, as sort of a market signal to invest. So in that case, um, you know, you can sort of go to them and say, we, we have this grant sort of funding from the CC facility, um, but it can't necessarily be used to directly match capital into an investment vehicle. Um, that's not sort of a, an intended use of CC facility funding. Um, but we do hope that our funding is obviously catalytic in terms of mobilizing other investors. Um, so that's that's the important distinction to make there. Um, and we also provide support, obviously, around fundraising um, and sort of helping you think through how to engage with the market um, you know, sequence investor engagement and and then also making uh, investor connections directly to to help you mobilize that capital. So that is a key a key goal of our support. Mm -hmm. 
We also have a question. Would a vehicle that is already functioning in a few countries, but now wants to continue expanding regionally, be eligible to receive funding? The answer is yes. Um, so, uh, you know, if that sort of fits well within our mandate, if you are um, already operating, um, but you are looking to take that approach and scale, um, then that is uh, a, a good use of um, of CC facility funding and, and acceleration support. So we would encourage you to apply. Um, in, in your application, I think it would be important to uh, articulate why the funding, and, and this goes as a general rule um, for, for those interested in applying, really articulating why you think um, our funding would be catalytic for you and enabling you to expand um, your, your financing or investment activities. Um, that's a key uh, sort of thing that, that we look for, um, because it, obviously, if you're already operating, there will be a question of, you know, how how is our grant funding and our support additional? Um, and so, uh, you know, being able to articulate that as you move through the application process uh, is really important. And thinking about, again, the areas of acceleration support uh, that you want to um, prioritize as well. And and you'll have a chance to address that in, in the application uh, form itself. Um, there is a question on how many funding vehicle, how many funding vehicles are you targeting in this application window? Um, so we do not have a specific target uh, that we want to award this many amount of grants. But for context, in the first cycle, we awarded uh, six vehicle grants. And in the second cycle, we're close to awarding to five. So it really depends in terms of the quality of the applications that come in. But a general uh, reference or a guiding point would be about three to five vehicles. But it again, also depends on the quality of the pipeline that comes. But I will also add here that uh, we run two cycles in a year, so there'll always be additional um, funding opportunity as well. Yes, we received another question to that effect of, will there be additional cycles um, in 2025 and 2026? Um, so as mentioned during the presentation, we run two open calls for applications um, annually. Uh, and so there are always opportunities to apply or to reapply. Um, and in fact, you know, we often occur encourage uh, applicants who are not successful to reapply if if you feel that, you know, you've been able to make um, concrete progress since the last time you applied, whether that's, you know, bringing on uh, potentially a new funder or um, executing a pilot or um, sort of re further refining your your financial model and, and business structure based on, based on feedback from the market. Um, so certainly encourage um, uh, applications and you can always reach out to to us, uh, to, the, to the program team at info at ccfacility.org um, or of course ask questions in, in this forum as well um, to, to help clarify. We have a lot of questions coming in. So thank you all for, for your participation uh, and, and interest. We, we really appreciate it. Um, just looking through, um, we have a few questions about what is the right stage. Uh, I think this is something that we've, we've talked through um, a little bit, but um, let me see if I can, I can address uh, some specific questions. Uh, so we have a question from Fernando Diaz. We have a concept for a fund focused on regenerative cattle farming and an understanding of the market we aim to finance, but are still in the idea stage. How early is this for the CC facility? So great question. Um, and I think uh, sort of applicable to, to multiple different types of, of applicants. Um, this would probably be a little bit early for the CC facility. As mentioned, um, if you have sort of a concept or an idea, but um, you haven't sort of taken that further in terms of developing financial model, you haven't um, sort of put together a proof of concept or um, you haven't executed a similar transaction in, you know, in a prior initiative or at a prior firm, um, then it, it's probably a little bit early, but uh, you may be eligible for the Global Innovation Lab for climate finance or design funding windows. And um, we posted links to those uh, 
uh, applications uh, opportunities in in the webinar chat. So please feel free to to check those out. Those are really designed to sort of help um, funds or, or financial vehicles that are sort of in the early stage of ideation, feasibility testing, um, and and piloting to to sort of walk through that process and ultimately become uh, hopefully competitive applicants for for the CC facility and, and be able to more importantly take those ideas to market. Great. With that, I think we unfortunately will need to to wrap up. But as mentioned, um, uh, we we are holding two office hour sessions this Friday. Um, and so, uh, as you can see, there are links to register for those in in the webinar chat. Um, one will be at ten a.m. to twelve p.m. UK time. The other will be at nine a.m. to eleven a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we encourage you to to join um, if you're interested and and you feel that your questions haven't yet been addressed. Um, we'd encourage you to join at the start of those sessions. Um, we will go sort of uh, up to the two hour mark, but really as long as as people are engaged and and have additional questions. Um, so we'd encourage you to to join those um, if you're interested. Um, and and just really wanted to say thank you all for your engagement uh, in a really informative uh, and and hopefully helpful session. Um, and we would encourage you to apply for this application cycle if you feel that you meet the criteria we've gone through. Um, and we really appreciate your time and interest in the program. So with that, I think we will wrap up. Thanks very much, everyone, for your time. And we look forward to hopefully reviewing your applications. Thank you, everyone.